Okay, Albert, you like history? Well, here's a history lesson of Chuck Bomberito. <laughs> so, uh, I'm going to kind of bounce around, but uh, I'll try to give you a synopsis. Um, so, here's a photo. It was uh, of me taken at, at Crestmore High School. Uh, Tony Machado was the photographer. It happened that he was my seventh grade basketball coach, and he had gone to high school with my older sister. And uh, he was a uh, photographer, so he uh, he was uh, he was the one that had my face in the newspaper quite a bit that you'll see. But this was the uh, pose photograph, uh, and uh, I don't recall if this was junior or senior year. To be honest with you, uh, might be able to take a might be able to tell you that from other photos. Um, possibly my senior. The scar there in my leg was given to me as a freshman or a sophomore by an upperclassman with his track cleat being a wise ass and spiked me. Um, but uh, we will continue on. So all sorts of uh, all sorts of press things that I'm going to talk about, but I, I think one of the most important things in my track career, and I'll show you here. This this book here was given to me by uh, one of my uh, friends and a teammate on the on the team he was he kind of hung with the team more as a social aspect which I'm going to kind of explain so my sophomore sophomore year um, and I'll jeez, uh, I should show you the photos so anyway my sophomore year there was two fellas that uh, harassed the hell out of me they were on the mile relay team and they uh, they started the whole spirit thing, I guess that that my class had. Um, I'm just seeing if their photos are right here, and I don't see it. So anyway, uh, one of my buddies, Alan, had had had, had, had gone to my track. He ran on the track team, friend through high school, still a friend today, and uh, he they put together this this uh, little album for me. Uh, I was quite, quite surprised. They, they had kept track articles and I'm talking about, this is only like 10 years ago that they gave this to me. Um, so they, him and his wife, who she was a cheerleader on the team, they kept all these different articles uh, regarding the track team. And uh, one of the coolest things about this is this. And that's what I wanted to start off, wanted to start this off with. Speed City, Songbooks for the Crestmore Track Team by Barnacle Bill. Well, my sophomore year, I'm going to go regress here. My sophomore year, we had three buses. And it was a big deal to ride in the back of the bus. Well, if we got on the bus with the seniors, we got our ass kicked as sophomores. And so we created our own sophomore bus that year. And of course, we're all in the back of the bus, the, the crowd, the guys. And of course, the big thing about being in the back of the bus is hanging a bare ass. So we had our fun hanging bare asses out of the back of the bus. Junior year comes along, we can't wait. I mean, the spirit, the spirit of the team, of the guys, and, and you're talking about three buses. I mean, it was quite amazing. I, I'm really, you know, take my whole track thing aside. The, the experience of being with this group and the spirit that we had, um, that's a team that you can't beat, the close-knitness that we had. Um, so with that, my junior year, one of the very early track meets of the year, we're coming back up Highway 280, of course, we're hanging bare asses. We're having fun. We're just hooting, hollering in the back of the bus. Well, one of the coaches tells us to sit down and shut up. So, as a joke, nothing. It wasn't really aimed at the coach, but some somebody said, "Hey, everybody laugh," and then everybody stop, and everybody laugh, and everybody stop. So we were doing that. Well, the coach took it as a slight to him. We got back to the. To the uh, circle there at the bus stop at the at the uh, Crestmore High School, told not to leave the bus. Uh, Etherton came onto the bus, 
um, kind of read us the riot act um, and I was I was banned uh, primarily me and a few others but banned from riding in the back of the bus so all future track meets I had to sit in the front of the bus um, one track meet I think it was at Hillsdale it ran late I hid in the back of the bus under duffel bags and they looked for half an hour and uh, the bus wouldn't leave till I appeared and I uh, got my hiney in trouble for that one too so we move on to our senior year and we coach, coach of course we go to coach Etherton you know and I go come on coach can I sit in the back of the bus so coach Etherton says hey why don't you guys just sing songs well I think he regretted the ever the day that he ever said that so immediately the songbook for the Crestmore track team was mimeographed remember back then was mimeographed and it was pages of the nastiest songs that you could you could think of this is something else my buddy so this songbook I didn't have it and one of the other fellas that was on the track team not a very good athlete by any means he kept it and he found it up in his attic like 30 years later and he gave it to the other friend to give to me well so senior year starts we uh, get on the bus and we uh, hand out this we hand out this songbook and I'm talking about we handed out the freshmen's <laughs> and we say you're gonna sing and so we get on the bus and we're riding home from our first track meet and of course we won the meet and we're singing these filthy songs nothing could be nicer than to spread her legs and spice her in the morning nothing could be better than to hop in bed and get her in the morning and uh, Barnacle Bill and the sailor was the the biggest one uh, who's that knocking at my door who's that knocking at my door who's that my knocking at the door said the fair young maiden it's me and my crew and we're here for a screw said Barnacle Bill the sailor and it went on and on so we would sit we sang these songs all the way home just rooting and hollering and having the, the best damn time bus pulls into the circle there in front of Crestmore Etherton stands up says nobody gets off the bus and he goes through and he collects all the copies of this songbook I, I, I thought we were gonna kick his ass to be honest we were pissed so he says so in the in the whole f f ruckus there he said look at you guys win the finals I'll give you back the, the song books okay there's the challenge for us team we'll do it so didn't matter we knew these songs by heart already so we went on singing the rest of the season no bare asses but just just all these filthy songs singing uh alakazit kazit kazam son of a bitch goddamn horses ass cows titties we're the boys from speed city yay weasel shit i hope you're not religious albert so <laughs> anyway so seen so end of uh we win we win the finals we're getting on the bus and of course we're waiting for coach etherton to get on the bus to give us back our song books Steve Lorenzo who's passed on my buddy he's back there with his accordion like a good Italian guy he's gonna play the music and Etherton gets on the bus and we're just screaming at him where are our song books and and uh, he says geez guys he goes I'm really sorry he says I know I made you a promise but I threw him away and of course we said that's okay coach we opened up a duffel bag and handed him out again to everybody so anyway this this songbook uh the spirit that it created on our team and i'm talking about the guys that really weren't great athletes uh by any far the camaraderie the friendship uh the power that it created in our team was unbelievable so anyway uh very fortunate that uh this this survived um it should be in a should be in a in a uh, hall of fame in my in my opinion anyway my buddy kept me all these pictures and and then he would show up at all my at cal at all the home and he kept all my cal uh uh cards
Okay, I don't know that if Coach Etherton did this when you were at Cappuccino, but this is typewritten, and he did it every year. Uh, and these were mimeographed. There's no photocopies or any, no copy machine. They had the old mini mimeograph. And one of the biggest things uh, during the track seasons, and I've I've got all the years, was uh, the day of the track meet. He would post. Um, he would post the uh, entries so you knew so that's results there so here's entries so he'd post the entries and you'd see what you're going to run and who was going to run where and then the next day he would have the results and he'd have everybody's times you'd get underlined if you did a uh, maybe a school record uh, Crestmore field records were underlined uh, so he would he would give you a little history um, uh, he'd give you, you know, little special pats on the back, everything. You can't I can't tell you the amount of work that he must have put in for this. The, the, he must have had a great love for for this, and and so these were very important for us as part of the track team uh, to see what was happening, and you get to see everybody's results and get to take a look. Every year he did a uh, track testing, and this is what's on the cover here. So you ended up. Uh, uh, jump reach, your thir uh, running 30 yard dash, standing long jump, shot put 440 in the pole vault, and I don't know what this other one was, but then he would tell you what events you should run or what you should do. So anyway, uh, and then of course you you probably seen that every year he put out like an album that gave the all the history and all the meets and everything. It was quite eventful, uh, quite a big thing. One of the other big things regarding um, the newspaper was the San Bruno Herald, which I don't even know if it still exists, but the San Bruno Herald um, was every Thursday that paper came out and um, was to go see what was in the San Bruno Herald and see what Scoop Winecoop wrote about you. And he, there's an article in here that he wrote about me after but he was uh, quite interesting uh, on the items that uh, he had. Here's an envelope that came from my sister and uh, full of my, my press clippings that they had, uh, they had kept. Oh, there's me as a baby. <laughs> what else? I didn't even open this up, but uh, they kept, uh, they kept uh, all my press, my press clippings also. Um, beyond them, Keeping uh, my press clippings uh, from a freshman year, I, I kept all of, all of my uh, all of my press clippings uh, as uh, life went on. Um, these were some of the later ones. Uh, this was actually uh, out of the San Jose Mercury, um, which you know we were up the peninsula, so we really weren't part of the. We were just part of the CCS. Um, some different different articles and stuff that named me. Um, oh, Coach Etherton. Nah, oh, nah, I think Coach Etherton sent me this whole packet. He got he hooked up with my wife uh, through um, uh, Facebook and uh, sent me the article, some articles. And there's, you know, this book's tattered. There's the article of winning the state meet. And, and this... Uh, this fellow here, Ron Reed, who used to write for the San Mateo Times, um, I guess he might have been enamored with me. Uh, he was uh, he was quite helpful in all the articles that he wrote on me. So anyway, uh, here's uh, freshman year, um, and I would underline my underline what I did when I got my name in the paper. I guess that uh, I guess I needed the, the limelight. Um, and uh, wasn't that much, but uh, uh, I got my. I was a, on varsity that year, so I actually got my varsity letter as a freshman. Oh, well, that's freshman football there. Uh, there's my varsity letter for track. And then uh, Etherton, of course, gave you who got track blocks and gave you a whole recap of the season at the end of the year um, and records and everything else. Um, sophomore year. Um, 
This was uh, a photo at uh, College of San Mateo when we started running the uh, running the winter meets. Um, we would do that, run 60-yard dashes. Um, little article here, Emery bows, but Bearcap spikes win. This was uh, Lonzo Emery, who was the premier senior sprinter, and I beat him in the uh, 200, 220 that day. Um, in the relay, I think we beat him in the 440 relay, and he threw the baton at me, if I remember right. But... Uh, I was quite pumped that I got my name in the Chronicle. It's the fastest, listed as the fastest in the state, you know, in that rankings as a sophomore. Um, and uh, all the different uh, different uh, articles that uh, they got posted. So uh, this was, this fella here, which is over here also in this other photo, uh, Barry Raymond. He was the, uh, he was one of my nemesis. Him. Barry Raymond and Bob Banning, those two. Ernie Hall was the big stud in campus. This was my sophomore year. Uh, and Steve Buell, um, I have to give much credit to Steve Buell. Um, he, he was the one that had us run all through the winter and through the summer. Uh, he would drive us. He was, he was our organize, organizer. And here uh, was the track club formed. And that was Steve Buell that started the Crestmore Track Club, and we had our own little emblem. It was the four of us, and we would go run, uh, run relays and stuff. This fella here is Toby. That's the one I had mentioned that was quicker than me, and I was faster than him, but he had hamstring issues. Um, so anyway, my sophomore year, um, all sorts of uh, articles and, and things uh, about my sophomore year. Um, the, uh, I, I think I won the uh, Downey Relays that year in the sprints um, as a sophomore. That was a big, big deal to me. Um, and then this photo here was where uh, <laughs> they sent us this photo, uh, Siegler Springs Sports Camp with uh, Dave uh, Maggart. And uh, this photo was taken in the 20s. The place was a shambles when we got there. But... Uh, Spent a week up there in the country with uh, with them. Some some interesting fellas. There was only maybe 12 of us that went uh, from different areas. Um, but anyway, um, the uh, I kept uh, my flight ticket to L.A. for the state meet. Uh, this was um, I think this was the hotel. This is the hotel in the Modesto at the West Coast Relays when we ran there. My I used to keep my numbers. And then uh, my awards uh, that I got. I played sophomore football. You know, we, <laughs> we won't talk about football. Um, and uh, my, my track letters. And then I think these are, if I set a record, I got Ether and gave you all these things also. I'm going to go on. Let's see. So we got all these different track records that I set that year. Then we go on to junior year. So I'm going to stop the camera and then come right back. Okay, Albert, if you're still awake. Um, so uh, there's the uh, Crestmore Track Club. Steve Buell, myself, uh, Toby Garza, and Gary Hicklin. Um, interesting story. Gary uh, was a baseball player. We talked him into coming out for track uh, winter of our sophomore year. And he went to College of San Mateo for a winter track meet, and he entered the uh, one-mile walk. <laughs> he was a half-miler and a quarter-miler. Um, but uh, this was, uh, it was, what did I just say? This is junior year. Steve would have been a senior. He's a year ahead of us. Um, this happens to be, well, I got it here. This happens to be a photo at Cal against Oregon State when I ran and I won. It just happens to be stuffed in here. The neat thing about this photograph, though, is um, the fellow that did the track club booklet for me and stuff, they're all here in the stands. A bunch of my high school friends are there in the stands that day. Um, interesting enough, uh, <laughs> I walked up into the stands after the race and some little kid came up and wanted my autograph. I said, kid, you don't want my autograph. Come on, man. And my one of my buddies, is a, he's a loudmouth, he starts going, hey, he stands up. Chuck won't give this kid an autograph. I go, give me the paper, kid. Leave me, leave me alone. Anyway, uh, Originally, I was awarded fifth in the state meet in the 100, and then after the photo finish uh, review, I ended up third. My original plaque was a fifth, and they sent me a new plaque for my trophy. Um, so the uh, Speed City at, at uh, Crestmore High School is our pole vaulter. 
So uh, lots of uh, lots of different uh, articles here. Um, when I ran 9.6, 21.5, um, some of the articles have been taken out. I, I sent some of these are loose because somebody wanted some copies one time, and I and I sent them sent them off. Oh, this is uh, there's a photo of our mile relay team that went to when I was a sophomore in this picture, and we went to state meet. So that's that's Barry Raymond, Bob Banning, and my two nemesis that just. They, they antagonized me daily, which was probably a good thing. That's what, you know, to beat them every day in practice was big. And uh, this fellow, DiCarlo, and of course, Coach Etherton was in there. So a couple more photos. Um, you'll see a photo of this later, actual photos. Uh, that was uh, CCS. Um, so a lot of, lot of, lot of uh, press as a junior. Um, Coaches honor Bomberito. What's that one? Yeah, I don't remember. Huh. One of the that makes me think about it though. When I was a sophomore, I had, you know, I always I ran the mile relay a lot. I never wanted to, but ended up uh, all the coaches, athletic directors, and everybody were down at Burlingame High School, and I got the baton way behind the guy and the anchor leg, and and ended up winning the race. You know, just took my time and worked my way around and, and got him. And I still remember crossing the finish line. And here was all these coaches up there. Some of them didn't coach me in anything, but the whole crowd was there. And I just heard them praising how that's the way to run a race and stuff. That was, it was nice to hear from them. Anyway, um, and there's the photo finish there at state meet uh, that was in the San Jose Mercury. Um, again, kept my numbers. Um, oh, we ran in. We ran indoors at the Athens Invitational. We ran a sprint medley, and we placed in it, if I remember right. Eh, Athens summary primp. We finished second to El Cerrito. Um, that that was a lot of fun running indoors. Um, and. Just some more stuff, certificates, and then it goes, of course, uh, Coach Atherton's uh, records and things like that. And I'm going to stop the camera again just so that it doesn't shut off on me while I'm talking. We'll go back at it. Okay, senior year. Um, kept my ticket to the state meet. Um, one of the stories about state meet, um, when we finished, the track meet was over at state meet my senior year. And um, I was uh, quite popular in the crowd, I have to admit. And uh, um, at one point, I remember my, myself, it was me and this, uh, Gary Hicklin that I had mentioned, he was in here earlier. He, they, they flew him down just to keep me company, uh, although he, was, he just missed qualifying for state in the half mile. And we were walking out of the stadium, kind of lost, to be honest, and people were coming up to me and I, um, not being racist, but a black guy started walking up to me just looking goofier in hell and I went, oh, I'm going to get my ass kicked. And he just came up and patted me on the back and congratulated me how great I was and everything. Well, anyway, that, that, that just in my head, well, we never found the coach. So what we ended up, we ended up on the freeway on-ramp hitchhiking. I was in my sweats, my trophies were hanging out of my bag. And we were hitchhiking to get on the freeway. And uh, a, a movie producer picked us up. And he asked where we were staying. And we told him the hotel. And he goes, well, I'm not going there. I'm going to the airport. And I said, my, I, I'm smart enough. I said, well, take us to the airport. And we'll call for the shuttle from the hotel. And that's how we got back to the hotel from that meet. I, I never talked to Etherton about him looking for us. Or at least I don't remember it. But anyway... That I, today, uh, somebody's parent would be suing the coach, I guess. Uh, so more articles uh, my senior year. Um, this one, uh, Crestmore takes on Woodside. Oh, they had this big, great sprinter. Well, yeah, he, I, I beat him pretty easily. Um, this is where we threw uh, Coach Etherton in the pool after we won the, uh, the finals. 
Um, so all the different uh, all the different uh, articles uh, that I kept. Um, I, my mom probably might have started this, but she passed away when I was 16, so, uh, and I probably kept it up. Um, oh, I know I kept it up. So again, my, my, my numbers, Modesto, uh, I actually won, I won Modesto, and then we went to Fresno. We went to the Fresno Relays, the West Coast Relays, probably the biggest meet you can go to. And we got there that day at Radcliffe Stadium, and... Etherton and I went over to the track to uh, for the 100 trials and it was raining and I remember we got there and like the gates were locked or something and I remember I was running around and I, I couldn't even feel my feet touch the ground I was like a thoroughbred ready to go it was just so ready and they ended up they canceled the meet for the high school kids that day uh, the tr and we had to go 50 miles to Lemoore the next day well, that night, all of us screwing around in the hotel and swimming and everything else. I was sicker than hell the next day. I sat in the lane waiting to uh, warm up for the 100, and I got killed in the 100. And that was that. Was that. <laughs> Interesting enough, though, the uh, quick story, the, the Modesto Relays, uh, wherever it made me think of that, at the Modesto Relays, um, we ran the mile relay. And at the Modesto Relays, we, uh, I ran a 48-3, I think. I, I got the baton in eighth place and finished second. Uh, my guys came in last on the first lap, last on the second lap, eighth place on the third lap, and then I took us to a second place. Well, at the Fresno Relays, they were going like, come on, we're going to win this today. And I'm sicker than hell, and I'm going, I don't want to run. I, I don't even want to do this. Well, the leadoff guy comes in first. The second guy comes in first, and I'm going like, oh, crap. And unfortunately, or fortunately for me that day, the second, the baton exchange between second and third, they dropped the baton. Um, so uh, I did not kill myself uh, from the behind that day. Anyway, um, finishing up my senior year, uh, I got a letter from the, uh, uh, who is this from? It's from San Mateo Union High School District's Mid Peninsula League Board of Managers uh, sent me a letter uh, accommodating me for my outstanding achievements um, that came in the mail one day. Um, this was uh, what was this 1970 junior year at uh, Region One uh, 100 yard dash. Um, I started, uh, I, I had ribbons and trophies, and you should have seen my senior year. They kept telling me to wear my medals on my block sweater, and I came in looking like George Patton one day. It was a joke. I should have took a picture of that. Uh, there's the finish at uh, sophomore, or junior, junior year CCS finals at Foothill College. That's the finish of the 200. Oh, so... This was the Hill Invitationals. This is the one where Benny Brown beat me in that shortened 200. Well, I threw the discus. Um, I started throwing the discus when I was a sophomore. And uh, I actually finished, uh, I, my best throw was 150 feet something. I think I finished second in the MPL uh, back then. The cool thing about throwing the discus, though, was that I got to run in the weight man's relays whenever we went to Invitationals. And I'll tell you, our weight man relay never won, right from when I was a sophomore. My sophomore year, one of the other weight men that was a, quote, weight man could run in the low 10s in a 100-yard dash. So uh, I still remember one day at a weight man's relay, standing in the top of the turn, uh, the guy in the other lane looks at me and he goes, we're going to kill you. And, and I thought, really? And <laughs> I got the baton before he ever got the baton, and he was a weight man. So we won that race. Anyway, um, uh, one of my great starts uh, <laughs> that sophomore year, the dual meet, uh, finished at the CCS. This was uh, finishing a mile relay. Not a happy boy, never was. Uh, that was on the stand for winning the 100 yard dash at my CCS my junior year, the press pose. Um, this was a photo, this was my, when I told you about the uh, St. Roberts. Uh, so this is the, the uh, 
PPSL, Peninsula Parochial School League. I took eighth, uh, took second place there in the 100-yard dash. I ran 11.5 as an eighth grader uh, in tennis shoes. <laughs> um, probably Region 1 in my junior year. And then there's some football pitchers. Uh, I actually scored some touchdowns. That's a whole other story in my football career. Um, uh, finish, uh, finish line at... Uh, CCS my junior year. Um, interesting photo here. Um, I'm not going to zoom in on it, but my eyes are closed right at the finish line. This is uh, Region 1 my junior year. And Tony Machado, the one that was I told you about, took all the photos of me. Well, he met me at my house one day with these photos to give them to me, and he goes, what's wrong with that picture? What's wrong with that picture? And I, I said, I don't know. I, I won the race. And he goes, your eyes are closed. He goes, if I'm going to be there to film you and do these press photos, he goes, you better come across the line with your eyes open and be posing. <laughs> but that was quite unique. Um, CCS, my uh, 220 um, final there. Um, this was a handout, Northern California Running Review, uh, that had a bunch of things. One of the highlights in here was I ran uh, – Oh, this this uh, this was that I was uh, named uh, prep track Northern California prep tra track athlete for the year. Uh, I was the top guy, yeah, but in this in this pamphlet was where I beat uh, Rick, I ran a uh, college 220 and beat the guys. It was after state meet. One of the things I you know I was invited to the Golden West Invitational my senior year, and I was pretty much exhausted, and uh, I ended up. Uh, Etherton would come into my biology class and go, hey, they just called. They want you to run this relay with this, this, and this guy. And I said, no, I'm not going to go. And then he'd come back in the next day, hey, this other guy, they got this team set up, and they want you to run with them. Plus, I was automatically invited to run the 200 since I won the state meet, and I, I turned all those down. Um, I, was, I was just – I had one state, and that had, uh, that had done it for me. These were just uh, – uh, achievement awards from when I was in grade school, and uh, this is the um, this is one of the uh, articles, and I guess I'll read it to you really quick. Uh, I'll blow through it as fast as I can go. This is a uh, scoop wine coop or Warren wine coop, and this is probably a good idea of how he wrote. So it says this was after some years uh, passed. Uh, it was. It was a long time ago, Crestmore was a new school in San Bruno, and the Golden Falcon needed a bigger star to bring recognition to the spring program. Not just in... I never know when my camera shuts off, Albert. His name, appeared frequent, his name frequently appeared in the Golden Bears track results, and the most Peninsula sports fans were anticipating that Chuck Barmerito would break the world record in one of the two spring events. Then suddenly, without provocation, Bomberito quit tra Cal and track. Shocked many because the door was open for an opportunity to become a famous person. But the girls giggled some more, saying, that sure sounds like Chucky, babe. Meantime, people in sports everywhere attempted to make him change his mind about school and track. But Chuck had other ideas. Ideas today that have made him happy in every respect. He decided to cool his ambitions for athletic recognition and go to work for the City of San Bruno Street Department. Bomberito has worked two years now for the city and spends every day in San Bruno. He has no regrets about leaving education or sports. In fact, you might say he's happier than those days when the pressure was on to break the record every time he went to the blocks. Bomberito, once known as the human bomb, had other ideas about his future, and that future now is he works for the streets of San Bruno. But it would be wise for anybody to go up to him this week. It would, but it wouldn't be wise for anybody to go up to him this week and challenge him in a short foot race, because he can still has the ability to beat you. <laughs> he also uh, nicknamed me the Bambi leg, Bambi leg Bambino from Cherry Park because I lived over next to a Cherry Park. <laughs> so anyway, that was that. So St. Robert's stuff. And uh, then we move on to uh, Cal, uh, Bomberito's debut. Again, this was uh, Ron Reed, who was following and keeping my name on the front page of the San Mateo Times all the time. Uh, he later went on to, uh, to uh, 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 Sports Illustrated. Uh, this one here, uh, uh, Cal puts Bomberito in a harness. 
Um, this was an attempt to make me get better starts. Uh, they didn't know what the hell they were doing. Uh, I, I mentioned that we used that a little bit, and they had me running. It was ridiculous. Uh, <laughs> it did nothing for me. Uh, anyway, uh, as you can tell, Cal, Cal was not the greatest thing for me. Um, but there was my uh, different uh, different uh, articles that were in the uh, paper there. Uh, finish at a race. Uh, there's a post press picture with Eddie Hart. Um, like gotta gotta love the lamb chops there, huh? Um, and uh, handing off in a uh, relay race there. Um, and let's see. I think that's. Uh, I think that's uh, the whole synopsis. So I guess I got some of the Cal stuff there too. But anyway, uh, whoops, hit the camera. I uh, I hope you enjoyed that. I guess that kind of gives you an insight uh, more to uh, to me uh, during my my track uh, career and uh, the things that motivated me. Um, and luckily, uh, had a lot of the right surroundings and. Coach, uh, you got to give a lot to uh, Coach Etherton. Uh, he'd be interesting to talk to him and see what he said about me. I, I don't know, but anyway, uh, hope that uh, hope that uh, answers things for you, Albert. And uh, we'll go. We'll uh, talk to you soon. And and just want to say thank you. I appreciate you doing this.